In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you how to use scale keyframing to explode images and text on your screen. This will add a lot of energy. So what we'd like to do is play this short clip and then we'll show you how to make it even more dramatic by using scale keyframing. You get the picture, the music has lots of energy, but unfortunately the video doesn't. So what can we do to match the two? Only by using scale keyframing. I'm going to first of all click on track number two, which contains the image of my vehicle, and I'll double click. That will put me into my PIP designer. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to figure out, well, when do I want the car to be this size on the screen? Let's move in, oh, maybe about something like three and a half seconds or so. We'll make it come in pretty rapidly. And then we'll set a scale keyframe. And so at three seconds, 19 frames, it's going to be this size on the screen. Then all I need to do is take my time indicator, playhead, move it to the beginning of this particular clip, and set another keyframe. And now I'm going to go back to my object settings on the scale side and I can take the width or height since they're locked together. Maintain aspect ratio is clicked. Slide either one as far to the left as I can go. And it records 0.001 which is virtually invisible. And so if I go ahead and play this in the previous screen, I see the car coming in. A little more energy. That's nice. So we'll go ahead and click on OK. So now we have energy to the car. Let's add energy to my titles. I'm going to go to my title track, which for me happens to be track number three, and double click on that. That will get me into my title designer. And then I want to highlight the title. We're going to start with the August sale. And then we'll, we'll click on the arrow to the right, and it tells me these are the keyframes I have for my August sale. Let's go ahead and move our playhead uh, to the beginning of where it's starting here. And we'll set a keyframe. Let's set a keyframe here for scale. And then I'm going to move in farther. It's at 329. Let's go to uh, not quite 429. Not, not take quite, quite a second in length. I want it to be fast. And I'll set another keyframe for scale. Now on my second keyframe, I want it full size. My first keyframe, I want it huge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink down my previous screen scale and take this and enlarge it and drag it over to the left where we have it about centered here. And then I'm going to move to the right again. Now notice when I did this, it moved the smaller size below the screen. That's not where I want it to be there. I want it to move in position. So I'm going to put it right up here. I'll move back to the previous one. Okay. And to the second one. Now if you have, here's a trick. If you have these close together, it almost looks to the human eye as though the first one is huge and way, way off the screen. You don't have to magnify it a hundred times, which you can't do in PowerDirector. But if the speed of its movement is fast enough, it gives the illusion to the human eye that it's coming in from everywhere and it's really large. So let's go ahead and preview this and see what we have. Okay, I want this t time to be short because I don't want them to see the letters only filling part of the screen. So I could even make it less than uh, two-thirds of a second if I wanted to here. Um, but we'll leave it at this for now. Now the other thing I'd like to do is take my other title. I'll, I will shrink that one back. We'll go to our track that's 20% off. And then I can click on this particular option. 
and we're going to do the same process because you, if you have multiple titles in your title designer you can treat each one separately so we're going to move our playhead now with that one selected and we'll start at the beginning and we'll set a keyframe for scale and then we'll move in a bit and again I want it to be pretty close let's see my time is 921 let's go to about 1008 and set another keyframe in fact I might move this one back just a hair there we go and now what we're going to do again is take the first one and in this case uh, let's we could make it huge or we could make it small let's make it large so what I'm going to do is with that selected I'm going to shrink my screen down so I can blow it up nice and big and I'll enlarge it and then I'll move to the next keyframe We'll go back so we have it in the right position. And we'll move back to the previous one. Okay. And let's go ahead and play this and see what happens. Okay, now what we have is it looked like it hesitated. That's because we haven't rendered it yet. But I'll click on OK. We'll go ahead and render it and then see what it looks like in its finished form. If this were a professional project, I would actually add more motion and more objects uh, given the length of the clip and the music. But you get the idea of some of the ways you can use a scale keyframe only to add quite a bit to your project in terms of energy and speed and interest in CyberLink PowerDirector. Director.